get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like founders of P90X, Atari, now Steve Sims, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, anyone with clients, serving clients one-on-one, shift from one-on-one to working with them one-to-many and not just trading time for dollars. Go to rise25.com, check out our and download our free dream product ladder. It helps you design your business on one sheet of paper. I am excited. We have Steve Sims, founder of Bluefish. And I will make a bold statement, Steve. Listening to you expands my thinking in universe because what I Whoa. love about what you do is every time I listen to what you do for yourself and others, it makes me realize that anything is possible. And uh, Steve started off as a bricklayer, and he's created one of the world's most recognized concierge firms, Bluefish Concierge. And he's the author of Blue Fishing, The Art of Making Things Happen. It is a must-listen to, a must-read. I will listen to it when it comes out. And as he describes it, it's not a gopher service, not an old boys network. It's not a snobby bunch of party-crashing show-offs. Um, don't call them to pick up your dry cleaning. Instead, they offer the highest-level personalized travel entertainment and there's so much Steve has done, and I know Steve. You know, you get these questions over and over. Like I was saying, listen to nine hours of video. So I'm gonna get to the heart of it, and I'm gonna just tell people you've helped people take submarines to see remains of the Titanic, getting stay on stage and performing the Journey, going to Elton John's Oscar party, going to the Grammys. You've had someone married by the Pope at the Vatican, a private dinner in Florence in front of Michelangelo's David with Andre Bocelli serenade. Anyways, most cherished thing for Steve is his family and friends, and as long as he has enough whiskey and food and motorcycles. So, Steve, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure. What an intro. I can go now. Another common question you get is, what's on your bucket list? And you're like, you know, there's not much. But I'm curious of, has there been anything in your wife's bucket list that you've been able to uh, do? (laughs) Oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right. So, she's just left. (laughs) <laughs> I will make sure she never sees this. I <laughs> want her to see this. I'm sending this no, to her. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so years ago, years ago, I realized that I hate Hallmark. I hate Hallmark because they make money out of me buying some chintzy little card to give you on your birthday. So we I, I'm in complete 100% agreement. Yeah, 100%, yeah, yes, I, yes. I, I'm not there to keep Hallmark in business. Yeah. So what I started doing, was I started celebrating Happy Tuesday okay. and Freaky Friday. So randomly, she'll get like some flowers and I'll book a meal and I'll be like, it's Freaky Friday, did you miss it? You know, did you not know? And so it's a standing joke. But on her birthday uh, and Christmas, she gets nothing. No card, <laughs> no pl- and I And I know everyone's out there going, boo, bastard, horrible wanker. Boo. She gets nothing, but what I do is I provide her with an experience. And she is crapping her pants every year because all the way through the years, I've sent her skydiving, unarmed combat with Navy SEALs. Um, I sent her shooting with um, the head of uh, uh, one of the Navy SEAL teams. I won't tell you who the captain was, but one of the serious ones that went out there and did the business, uh, went out shooting all this machinery. Uh, She's done Formula One driving. Uh, she's met uh, heroes like Sting, um, but she doesn't. She'll go, oh, that would be nice. And nowadays she goes, oh, that would be nice. Don't you do that? And <laughs> she suddenly can like, realize. So last year, and because years ago we used to do some work with Ferrari, and then when I came here I did some work with Porsche, and we actually had a Porsche, and that was the car that we fell in love with. As I say, I don't have a car now, and we got kids, so yeah, you end up with the mandatory uh, um, big big trucks um right. she's got an suv so last year i sent her to the porsche racing experience mm. with a porsche le mans winning driver who basically taught her how to drive and then scared the shit out of her for like a two hour wow. learn to race a porsche racing car this year she's 50 and i can't even every, imagine this this 
Put it this way, it's not in this country. She <laughs> doesn't even know that. But it's um These are a lot of these are surprises, Steve. Like are they surprises that she doesn't know or is a lot of she knows She wakes up in the morning yeah. and she has no idea. And yeah. even now she's like I'm fifty. She's scared. She said, Don't make me run away to England. You know, don't make me can I disappear so you can't find me. And I'm like, babe, you'll love it. And us a couple of times like the skydiving yeah, what's the she one she too... hated you the most afterwards? Skydiving and uh, motor racing. Um, she likes cars. She liked the Porsche, mm -hmm. but I put her actually in a race car. And when you're in a race car, you've only got your helmet and you're about that far off of the floor. The uh, sensation of speed is far greater, like on a go-kart. Yeah. Um, and we had guys there really pushing her. And she wasn't too happy about that one in the sky. I would have freaked out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the skydiving, she landed pretty badly. Uh, she didn't pick her knees up fast. She's like, you're trying to kill me on my 50th birthday. <laughs> yeah, so she, that, those two didn't go well. We did have a, a shark experience as well. A shark? But, um, like uh, a yeah, great white? What it. was it? It was in Florida to actually get into. They had these sharks you could actually get into a pool with no cage. What? And um, Yeah, and uh, she said no. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay then. Um, so there's. There, so the standing joke is, when have I got it wrong? And she's like, I can count three times she's got it wrong. And I'm like, well, that's in the past. So what did you this, year, this year is going to be good. What did you consider the scariest that someone actually did? Like from Sorry? you, you were actually fearful, like whether it was getting in a shark tank or something, that, that someone actually wanted came to you and they wanted to do it, and you were scared for them that they wanted to do it. Um. You stopped me in my tracks there. I don't know if it's because I'm stupid, <laughs> but I don't actually get scared. Not um, for you, for them, no? Nothing. No, because if I'm scared for them, then they're going to get scared, and therefore <laughs> the fear is going to become alive, you know? Um, but uh, I remember one of the greatest lines ever, and I don't know if you can remember where this came from, but it was called uh, fear causes hesitation and hesitation will cause cause your worst fears to come true. Do you I don't know. Where that's from? No, I don't. I don't. Point break. Ah, great yeah. movie. Yeah, it, great movie. But I just remember when he said that line, I was like, damn, you're right. The fear is the fear itself. And the more it gets scary, the bigger this animal of fear becomes. So I look at something and I will just try and be cold about it. And I will try again to dismantle it. And I will go, well, okay, what's, what's the worst case scenario? If I walk in there and I get, a, I, I get a smack in the head, you know, or I could get shot. All right, I don't want to be shot, but I don't mind a smack in the head, you know. So I try to weigh it up. And I always try to look to my worst downside. And then can I scale it back a little bit from there? And I do that with motorcycle racing. I do that when I'm boxing. I always try to analyze What's the worst thing that can happen here? Yeah. Um, and I look at it and I go, oh, that's not a risk I'm willing to take. So I therefore, do, I don't get to that point where I go, I'm scared. Because when you get scared, you get hopeful. And you're sitting there going, I hope this goes on. I'm not leaving it to chance. Right. I'm not going to do it. If, I, if I'm starting to feel nervous about something, that doesn't happen. Yeah. I'm curious, Steve, what's the hardest thing you pulled off? And what I mean is someone may see, okay, pulling off that the Vatican being mirrored by the Pope is hard. But for you, maybe that wasn't as hard as what it looks like. What on the, on the, the under the surface was harder to pull off than like one of the hardest things that you've actually pulled off? Like behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, I'd like to maybe say the most challenging. Yeah, most challenging. Um, so... When the good thing about it is 20 odd years later, being able to read off the toolbox of achievements that you did earlier, when we go to anyone, we can go forward saying, hey, before you answer my call or speak to me, I'd like to show you my top 20 things I did right. last month. Right. You know, right. and they go, well, OK, what do you need? So I have that credibility to go into every conversation. Right. And the bigger it is, to be honest with you, the kind of easier it is. I don't want to jinx myself, but if you've got that reputation, that helps you. Mm -hmm. um, it's when that reputation doesn't come into play. Right. Like for argument's sake, if you're trying to can like 
handle a, a, um, a, an elephant. The elephant doesn't give a crap who you are. So it's those er elements where your reputation doesn't help you. I have a client that every year, and I really like this one, I try not to cry on it. Um, every year for his anniversary, and he's been married forever, um, he does something absolutely wonderful for his wife. And the budgets have gone from like $25,000, I think the most was probably about $400,000 for a weekend wow. to do something to celebrate. And it's always big, private jets and taking over diamond mines and just like these palaces in Russia and just, you know, czars and just, it's, it's big, you know, reenacting an 18th century village. Um, it's always been that kind of stuff. So he contacted me because we were coming up to one of his uh, um, key years, and I think it was the 20th. And he's like, 20th, Steve, you know? And his wife knows me, so she knows it's going to be something. He's like, the 20th, you know, this, this is the 20th, you know? This is big! And I'm like, it is big, it is big. So we've got to make it, <laughs> we've got to make it, you know, big. And so I always talk to the people. You're egging your mind, and yeah. I want to get to, I want to get to the root of it. I want to get to the core. So I'm like, yeah, this has got to be big. He's got to be, this has got to be. And I remember him using this world. This has got to be impactful. Hmm. And I went, okay. Taking over the Eiffel Tower is big. Is it impactful? Not when you compare it to some of the other stuff, hmm. you know? Yeah. So I went, all right, let's have a chat. Talk to me. When did you first meet her? You know, well, I met her at college. How did you meet her? Oh, God, it didn't go smoothly. Most introductions don't. The girls play hard to get. And uh, I said, so, you know, talk me through it. So we tried talking to her and it hadn't gone very well. And, you know, he was, you know, there was a little bit of a, a break in the armor that he thought he was getting somewhere. So one day he knew which way she went to college and went out for her dinner break. He set up uh, a little, what they call a car rug, you know, which is those like um, uh, big uh, check um, carpets. And he laid it down and he, um, he got a hamper uh, with sandwiches in it and some, some champagne in there. And he had a boom box that was playing this like romantic music. And as she came out of the college room, he sat on that, that rug, plays the music, offers up a glass of champagne. He said, will you join me? Mm. Now, as a college student, that's pretty cool, isn't it? For sure. Okay? Yeah. He's the head of a company now. So I said to him, why don't we recreate the first moment you met? Mm. That's really awesome. Okay. So we thought this is going to be by far the cheapest thing. So where are you? Yes, it's summer. So there should be no rain. Get a rug. Do you remember what the rug was like? He was like, I made me had to find a picture. And he found an old picture of when his family was on that rug. So we got a tartan rug that looked the same. Wow. He described the hamper. We got the hamper. Of course, the sandwiches were a little bit better than the sandwiches he'd had then. The champagne was a nice champagne. Had to be in plastic glasses for the reason you're in a public park. Um, but here's where it came challenging, okay? Finding a boom box to run DMC would be proud of <laughs> that actually worked. So we went scouring eBay and all of these audio specialist stores. We went through two that didn't work, finally found one that was mint condition mm. and worked. And we were so impressed with ourselves when it came with the demo tape <laughs> to show their works. Now here, think about this. This is where it gets silly. We got the rug, we got the hamper, we got the food, we got the drink, we've now got the boom box, okay? How do you record onto that boom box from any of your MP3 players or any of your apples or anything like that? All of the cables, we're looking at this thing going, where do the cables go? So we couldn't actually record onto this system. So that's when I contact that one of the benefits of living in Hollywood. That's when I contacted a, a Look, there's I like, this like, thing I need. It's called, I think, like an audio cassette tape. Yeah, there, right? yeah. <laughs> that was the other thing. We, you know, we had to order one online because, again, nowhere sells cassettes. So we, ordered the, we had to buy a pack of three or whatever and then send them to him and get him to just put the music on it we liked. But, um, and I think the whole thing, the most expensive thing was probably that mint condition boom box, but this all happened for less than a couple of grand. Wow. And that was That's challenging amazing. because there was so much, it was, there was so much riding on the intricacy and the detail of that, that it had to be spot on. Right. Um, and as we all know, and again, this is a Dan Sullivan thing, your, your mind polishes the past. Um, 
I didn't want her remembering the rug to be green. We were very fortunate to get that picture. Um, but we had to make it as near as perfect. But that was the most mm. challenging, rewarding, and probably the most impactful. I love that. Thanks for sharing that, Steve. I mean, you really dig deep with these people to figure out deep down what is going to be the best experience for them. It may be things that they're asking. They may, may ask you for things, but you're going a lot deeper than what they're asking for, it sounds like. At this level, rarely have I ever given anyone what they asked for. Right. The, guy that, the guy that sang four tunes live on stage with Journey in yeah. San Diego, his request to me was to meet the guys. Yeah. You know, the guy that wanted, the guy that got the table of six at the feet of Michelangelo's David, 780 by Andrea, wanted an exclusive restaurant. Yeah. So the guy that wanted to get married in the Vatican had no idea we were going to get the Pope involved. Yeah. So I really try to, I want, this will probably go on my tombstone, I want to affect people's smiles. I want someone to wake up at two o'clock in the morning or to be stood there during a cocktail hour and someone says, oh, you know, I'm going over to Italy, do you know, and then go, actually, I've got to tell you a story. And I want, I want them to just be glowing and have the, I want them, my clients, to have the coolest cocktail stories you can get. Right, yeah. I want to encourage people to, if you have a bucket list, if you don't, write down and you know every time i listen to you steve and um i expands my mind i said in the beginning it's a bold statement but i'm sticking by it when you listen to what you talk about and what you help people do it expands their mind of what's possible and even what people think's possible you're taking it beyond whatever their wildest dreams may be so thank you for this thank you for the book people should Thanks. check out blue fishing the art of making things happen and I just want to wrap things up with what else should people know about the book? I don't know if there's a favorite story or a lesson we didn't talk about. Um, what should they know about the book um, that we haven't talked about yet? Um, I don't want you to get the book if you think it's going to change your life because it isn't. It's going to give you steps that can, but only when you stand up and action them. Yeah. And I want people to realize that this is written by a doorman from East London and therefore you have no excuse to be able to do three times as much as what I've done. So you're out of excuses. Um, each book at the end of each chapter has a very, very simple uh, playbook on what you, what you need, what the action items are that you can take away and place into anything. So you can read any chapter you like. You don't have to fall all the way through the book in line. Um, you can pick certain chapters, but it's an action book. It's not It's not like these people that buy a diet yeah. book. Think you don't want people to passively cinema. sit back, listen to this, read no. this, and not do anything. The point no. of this is to – I mean that's the subtitle, The Art of Actually Making Things Happen. Yeah, I'll give you the art, but you have to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Steve, always fantastic. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, bud. Thank you very much for having me. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand